So I'm going to be going over our strategic roadmap today. And uh, as I get started, I, I want to give a little bit of um, context setting for where we're coming from. Um, this year has been an incredible year of change for the Drupal Association. Besides hiring a CTO, we've been busy hiring an engineering team. Um, we've been doing tons of infrastructure improvements. We've been removing lots and lots of technical debt from a website that is essentially a 13-year-old website that's, to our knowledge, the longest continuously running uh, Drupal website. Um, it's huge in its complexity. Um, it's been upgraded in place every time, which there's very few Drupal websites that have done that. They usually do a migration path at some point. Um, that's just really uh, a huge amount of technical debt to work through and also to understand because there's, uh, there's a lot of complexity there that we've had to get our team up to speed on. Uh, we've had a lot of quick wins that we focused on. I'm going to go over a few of those. I'm going to talk a little bit about the user research study that we did starting back at DrupalCon Austin that went through the summer and kind of the outcome from it. Also the working group ideas ideation and prioritization process that we went through that helped us decide on the initiatives for this coming year. So first, uh, growing a Drupal.org team, if you can believe it, uh, October 2013, we had two staff, uh, both were contract, that were uh, maintaining Drupal.org with the community. And that was it in terms of full-time effort on Drupal.org. All the other effort was completely volunteer-driven. Uh, we hired a technology manager for the Drupal Association in October of last year. He also did some work on association.drupal.org on the DrupalCon sites to help kind of support that. And then we started going fully into a hiring mode, uh, starting with an infrastructure uh, lead, uh, Rudy Gagar, and uh, hiring in some um, technical support for, uh, for Drupal.org. Uh, Liz, um, Liz has been key in actually responding to a lot of the support requests that come in on Drupal.org and helping make sure that we triage what's coming in and attack the right things. So then I started, my, my first day was actually the end of March, and as you can see, we very quickly ramped up the team. We now go to 11.5. That's uh, 1.5 louder than 10, uh, and yes, that is a reference to Spinal Tap. So uh, I want to really quickly reiterate the thanks to the supporting partners. Without these people, we don't have uh, funds. Um, that they've, These companies have all contributed at a very high level to make sure that Drupal as a product is successful. Um, they've helped us buy the servers and hardware, obviously the dedicated engineering team. They're helping us uh, adopt, uh, increase Drupal adoption through marketing Drupal. And they're just making a lot happen for the community. So again, thank you. Um, I want to talk a little bit about some of those wins that this, this team that we've been building have been able to accomplish. And this is while getting used to the new environment, while learning about the system. Uh, we've launched a CDN, so we now deliver from the edge all around the world. Uh, we've launched APIs. We have a, a REST API that's available for Drupal.org at this point. If you're, if you're interested, please check it out. Uh, we launched semantic versioning and removed some other Drupal 8 release blockers, which was really critical to getting a uh, Drupal 8 beta out the door. We've been doing um, a lot of work to improve our quests to reduce spam on Drupal.org and the subsites. Um, I, know, I know that sounds like a, not a very glamorous thing, but it's actually something that's really important to making sure that Drupal.org stays very stable. Um, it's also not something that's very glamorous, so it doesn't tend to be something that volunteers are, are going to jump in and like dig into the deeper, um, uh, the deeper aspects of. So it's been really important to have paid staff to to jump in and and take on those tasks that really it, it's it's hard to jump in as a volunteer and do it uh, a few hours a week. It's it's something where you need to have kind of dedicated people that are focused on it at all times. Uh, we've also been doing some cool things in terms of trying to improve the new years new user experience. Uh, we've done some bakery customizations. Um, we've shifted it so that when you create a account on a subsite, such as a DrupalCon site, it creates it only on Drupal.org. Uh, we've been increasing our use of Malum on some of our subsites, uh, which has allowed us to do a little bit better job of spam detection on, say, like a DrupalCon site or um, sites like the association.drupal.org. And we're really changing the steps uh, behind what it means to trust a user. Um, and Part of that is, is I'm going to go into in a little bit more detail whenever I talk about our account creation initiative. So uh, some other big wins that we've had, uh, we've launched a lot of sites, um, DrupalCon Austin, DrupalCon Amsterdam, Drupal Jobs. Uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with that, we now have a job board that is 
available to the community. So if you're an employer looking for someone to hire or if you're looking to be hired, please go to Drupal Jobs, give it a, give it a look. Uh, we've launched DrupalCon Latin America. Um, we have a Drupal store that is now available um, so that you can buy Drupal gear online. Uh, we've upgraded quite a few sites too. API.drupal.org is on Drupal 7 now. Uh, Localize.drupal.org we're in the process of, and groups.drupal.org we're in the planning stages with, and I'll talk about that in a little bit more detail as well. Some of the other wins is we've really worked to become more enterprise in the way that we um, support Drupal, and particularly Drupal.org. We've done a, a really good job of documenting what we have, uh, which really there wasn't a comprehensive list of this is the sites that make up the Drupal ecosystem. ecosystem. Uh, we've enabled um, change notifications within the team, so we're actually sending out a weekly notification on Thursdays around noon Pacific, um, where we basically tell everybody what we're planning to change the following week. And that's been really important to uh, making Drupal.org more stable, making sure that people know what's coming next. Uh, on our team, we've introduced project, uh, an agile project management process. We're using a kind of a combination of Scrum and Kanban for the different teams to make sure that we are uh, addressing what we need to address and also being very iterative in our approach to building Drupal.org. So we've, uh, as part of that, we've in introduced a product planning and life cycle. Um, it, it's really about looking at all the subsites of Drupal.org and figuring out where they're at in their life cycle. Are they something that is, is just being introduced? Are they growing? Are they mature? Are they something that we actually need to start looking at retiring? And that's been uh, really important because there's actually a, a lot to the Drupal ecosystem for us to, to keep track of. Uh, we started tracking time, uh, which I know sounds like a small thing, but it allows us to do a better job of reporting back to the community where we're spending our time. We just started that in the October timeframe. Um, and we've really tried to improve the way we support Drupal.org. There's less open issues. Uh, answers to those issues are happening more quickly. Uh, we've also opened up two new channels for support. If uh, you don't have a Drupal.org account, so you can't submit to the issue queues, or if uh, you're having a problem logging into your Drupal.org account, you can email help at Drupal.org, and that goes through our Zendesk account. Uh, we are also responding to support requests on Twitter. So it's, it's really kind of changed the way that we're able to be responsive to the Drupal community. Um, when I talked about that inventory of here's everything that exists in the Drupal world, we've, we've really tried to break down here are all the sites that we're supporting. And as you can see, the, the Drupal ecosystem, all the subsites that make up Drupal.org, uh, is pretty um, extensive. If, if you look at the, in addition to that, if you look at the community supported things, so these are things that the, the team don't directly touch, but are built off of the systems um, that run in the Drupal.org eco ecosphere. Uh, we have to be really careful. When we make changes, we could be affecting something that is downstream. And so we want to be uh, uh, aware of that, and we also want to give notifications of that. So we've worked hard to make sure that we know what we have and also how it might affect others. So I want to go a little bit into the user research that we started in the June timeframe with uh, DrupalCon Austin. We had Whitney Hess come in as a consultant, and she worked with uh, us, the content working group, the software working group, and the infrastructure working group. Uh, we did some on-site uh, workshops to kind of talk through um, what is it that we want to do with Drupal.org, what are the objectives for, for Drupal.org. Uh, we conducted over 30 user interviews. Uh, many of them were in person at DrupalCon Austin. Uh, part of them were remote over uh, Google Hangouts or uh, conference calls in the following weeks. Um, the participants included people who were kind of all over the spectrum. Uh, we're working right now on actually pulling together uh, some survey information that we're going to be including in the early next year, and we hope to get a little bit more comprehensive uh, global input because we definitely got North America, South America, and Europe covered. Uh, we would love to get some more input from our users in Asia and our users in Africa because we think that there's um, that, that global impact of Drupal is, is huge. Out of that user research, we really came to a, an approach at looking at personas that says that the primary persona, the, the way people come to Drupal.org, is in a state of increasing skills. So you come into Drupal.org as a newcomer, uh, you progress to a learner, you progress from there to skilled, and at this point you're usually making some of your income off of, of Drupal. 
um, you then can progress to expert or master. And as you can see by the pyramid, basically there's a larger number of newcomers and it uh, increasingly um, or decreasingly uh, represents the number of users in our community as you get closer and closer to the top. So the, the, there's much fewer masters than there are newcomers to Drupal. Um, some of the key things that we're going to be focusing on are that kind of learner, skilled, and expert. These are the three personas that we have published on Drupal.org. Uh, learners really are trying to get through the website, and it's easy to go from newcomer to learner, uh, but it's much harder to go from learner to skilled because learners are, are coming into Drupal.org with uh, very little language to help them describe their experience. Uh, we have a lot of jargon, we have a lot of, um, of new terms that they have to pick up on whenever they start using Drupal. At Skilled, they're really getting to the point that they can do a lot with Drupal. One of the biggest uh, pain points for Skilled users is that frustration of finding a module. So they're, they're trying to find the right thing to help them build a solution for their customer or for their, their organization. And that's, uh, that's, a, that's an area where they can do a lot, but they definitely have some pain points that are directly around that, how do I build what's next? When you get to the level of experts, this is where we start seeing a lot of code contribution. And they, they really understand the Drupal system well, they can build modules, they can contribute. Uh, many of the experts are, are in that space where they're beginning to look at contributing to core, and we really want to support that effort by the expert. If we were looking at the most important transition on Drupal.org, it's that transition from learner to skilled. Because if we can grow learners into skilled Drupal users, we're increasing the size and impact of the Drupal community. And we see that as one of the key areas to focus on. And I think whenever you look at the initiatives that we have, that's the area that we've, that we've really spent um, the most effort with. We're certainly doing things for experts and masters. We're certainly adding content for newcomers. Uh, but in terms of features on Drupal.org. We're going to be focused on moving people from learner to skilled. Josh, I have a question really quick. Sure. Um, is localized Drupal.org supported by the Drupal Association? I'll go into that in a little bit uh, more detail a little bit later on, but the okay. short answer is we host it. Um, and we certainly push the code to it, so whenever there's a code deployment, that goes through our team. Okay. Um, but most of the work is actually, at this point, done by uh, volunteers in the community. And, and one of my asks today is going to be uh, getting in contact with the people who are a part of the localized project because they need some help in, in doing the upgrade from Drupal 6 to Drupal 7 and removing some blockers there. Um, and it's localized is critical to the uh, eventual Drupal 8 release because localized is how we translate Drupal into other languages um, so that people can use Drupal in their native language. Perfect. I think that answered the question. Thank you. Excellent. So uh, one of the reasons why we're building for learners uh, is we don't really need to build for masters. Uh, we don't need to build from the top of the pyramid because they already know how to work around all the issues on Drupal.org. Um, and I, when I say issues, I don't mean issues in the issue queue. I mean issues as in all the little problems on Drupal.org that we've, that we've all gotten used to over the years. We're certainly going to be getting rid of those, um, but whenever we're looking at bi biggest bang for our buck, it's definitely helping that learner become skilled. Um, we are going to have newcomer content that is focused on kind of the marketing of Drupal. This is going to be for the people in the organization that can make the decision to move to Drupal, whether that be the CEO or the developer or the designer that's, that's saying, hey, this is, this is the direction we should go. We should move to open source because it's the right thing to do. And so when we work for, uh, for newcomers, when we build things for newcomers, it's usually going to be from a marketing bent, and it's going to be giving them the tools to convince others that Drupal is the right way to go. So all of that user research had to be turned into a plan, and this is where really, I'm really going to go into kind of the details of how we made the decisions of uh, what comes next. So first of all, we have the working groups. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with the working group structure, we have working groups that are uh, focused on Drupal.org, and those are the Drupal.org content working group, the Drupal.org software working group, and the Drupal.org infrastructure working group. Um, each of these working groups are a mixture of volunteers and staff that are focused on um, helping decide the future of Drupal.org. Um, they're collecting all the information from the community and they're, they're processing that and they're turning it into something that's actionable for the team to execute on. We've done ideation, particularly with the software working group, for several years now. Uh, we've come back with a, a lot of themes year over year 
that were pretty much the same. Uh, the same features were being requested year after year. And really what we were seeing is that it was, it was difficult to get volunteers to jump in and tackle these really meaty problems that were going to take weeks of implementation. Um, because whenever you're, you're donating time to Drupal.org, you just don't have months to give. You have 10 hours here or maybe two weeks there, but it's not, uh, it's not a, a sustained six-month effort. So we knew we were going to have to bring in either contractors or staff to do some of this work. Um, and the working groups were aware of that. It was really about getting that next step going where we had someone to help coordinate that. And that's why building up the engineering team has been so critical. Um, out of the working groups, we really came up with this notion that there are three major objectives for Drupal.org, and this came out of a lot of the Austin uh, user research workshop work that we did and then some uh, honing that we did in the July timeframe. But the three objectives, which are all ranked number one on this slide, that's, that's a, I just caught a, a typo, so I'm very happy about that. Uh, <laughs> Be the home of the Drupal community. Actually, these all should be ranked number one. Be the home of the Drupal community, uh, the central source of relevant information, answers, collaboration, education, and talent. So really being um, where the community comes to do all of those things. Uh, we want to provide a learnable, efficient tool set that helps coordinate the advancement of the Drupal ecosystem. So making it easy to jump in and use Drupal, making it easy to jump in and contribute to Drupal. That's, that's one of the uh, big areas there. Uh, we also want to encourage people to develop themselves, their Drupal proficiency, their careers, and build human connections over time. And I think this one really ties into a lot of the profile work I'll be talking about in just a few minutes. So when we looked at all the long list of things that we could do, we really had to spend some time prioritizing our efforts. Um, there are over 16 production Drupal websites in that Drupal.org ecosystem. Um, there's nearly as many uh, production services that are integrated between those sites, things like search, um, updates.drupal.org, our FTP subsystem, like all of those things contribute to that larger ecosystem of sites and are all services that the community are using. Um, between all those systems, we push over 20 terabytes of data per month through drupal.org. And that's, that's, a, that's a really phenomenal number to think about, 20 terabytes. That's how much uh, collaboration and community um, is happening in that space, um, and that's pretty significant. It also costs a bit of money, and that's where, again, um, having the, the Drupal Association be able to pay those bills uh, thanks to the support of sponsors and members, that's, that's been one of the, the key bits that we've had. Those supporting partners are critical. With so many things to work on, it's easy for us to lose focus on a particular set of things that uh, need our attention, and this is where the prioritizing the efforts, it's not saying that we're not going to take care of the support things that pop up that um, are critical to keeping the site running, but we are going to say, here are the initiatives that this team can focus on, and that's what we're going to stay focused on. Um, because if we try to do everything, we won't do anything as well as we need to. And that, that was a real... Uh, we, we heard that time and again uh, as we were going through the, the prioritization process from folks. They were like, this is so good to be able to say, these are the things we're going to focus on. Um, and because we can't focus on everything, those volunteer teams that can jump in and help focus for a short time on something uh, that maybe isn't in our wheelhouse right now, um, those are so critical because that still moves forward those, uh, those, those areas. You know, having the 11.5 staff helps, but the, it's the volunteers uh, that are, are going to get those um, those smaller initiatives, those community initiatives moving forward. Um, and working groups, one of the big things that we've, we've said over and over is they're helping us keep the focus. They're helping us stay focused on the things that we said we were going to do and uh, keeping us accountable. So first we prioritized by objectives and uh, next we prioritized by the persona and revenue. Um, and you're seeing kind of a, a little bit of a chart up there where we started scoring all the various projects across our objectives. And, and this is a tool we've been using that's been really, really helpful. Um, it's it's a, a tool to get to consensus where consensus is hard to get to. Um, out of that, with the software working group, um, the software working group took requests from um, the content working group, from the infrastructure working group, uh, from our tools teams that have been set up that report to the, the software working group, uh, also from the documentation uh, um, the documentation working group, the technology working group, which are working groups that, that report directly up to Dries as a part of that governance structure. 
um, took requests from all of them, and then we prioritized them across our matrix. And we really came up with a, a top 10 list that looks something like this. Um, but we weren't done yet. Because what we realized is as we went through the user research and the personas, we ended up with a little bit of a different spin on here's a set of prioritization to focus on. There was a lot of overlap between the two, though, and that was something exciting to see because it meant that essentially the same things were important to most people. After we got done looking at that overlap, um, it allowed us to take and basically break all of our work down into four areas that we were going to focus on. Uh, we have things that will help us continue to fund Drupal.org. We have sustaining support and maintenance. We have community initiatives. And then we have board and working group priorities. And so by having those four areas that we're going to uh, kind of outline, here are the projects that we can actually tackle in those areas. So in terms of funding more great work, we're going to spend some time uh, continuing to improve Drupal jobs. Uh, we're doing work to make sure that the supporting partners' uh, benefits that we offer are uh, the best that they possibly can be so that our supporting partners continue to give at that level. Um, we're going to be doing work on the DrupalCon websites because it's critical for us to have that big community gathering uh, several times a year. Um, and that's, that's work that we have to do to make sure that that happens. Uh, we're going to spend a little bit of time on Drupal Store, but we've actually uh, made, made the choice to, to keep that as simple as possible so that it just provides the, uh, the gear that people want to be able to pick up that says Drupal on it so that they can help support Drupal. Uh, but we're not going to be spending a lot of time building a store because that's, that's not our, our, our key focus at the moment. Uh, we also have a, an opportunity going forward to, to do more with advertising and marketing on Drupal.org uh, to make sure that we're, we're basically making it a self-sustaining system. Long term, we want to make sure that Drupal.org is, um, is healthy and well-funded, and uh, one of the ways that we can do that is by diversifying where the funds come from. So we spend a little bit of time on funding Drupal.org, and then the next area, which is a much bigger chunk of our time, is the sustaining support and maintenance. Now, this is how we keep Drupal.org performant and secure. Uh, we're all about making sure that our uptime is great, that page response is great. Uh, we're supporting the old test bots infrastructure, so every time there's a major sprint at a, at a big Drupal event, we're spinning up more test bots so it can handle the load. Um, we're doing support for our users, which I talked about a little bit earlier with, uh, with you know, Liz jumping in the queues and Tatiana and Neil and others being able to respond to the issue queues and email support more quickly. Um, we've improved our, our automated testing infrastructure, so we now have a lot of behavior-driven design, um, a, a behavior-driven design approach. We're using Behat, uh, we're using Mink to uh, make sure that we have reliable deployment processes. We've also been doing a lot to maximize hardwares. Um, I, I'm very excited that uh, we, we have some new database servers that are going to be coming online soon that should give us this huge performance boost in the area of, of da database performance. Um, very beastly machines that we're, we're installing over at the open source um, labs in, in Corvallis as a part of our infrastructure to make sure that it's um, as performant as it can be. Um, part of the sustaining support and maintenance is really about that infrastructure, that baseline that we put everything on, because uh, whether it's being used by our own staff or by volunteers who are jumping in to contribute to development, um, that work is kind of critical to keeping us moving forward. Um, the next area that I, I want to talk a little bit about is community initiatives. And these are areas where uh, we're not going to focus staff, uh, but we will support with staff um, if we can find community members who will jump in and help out. We have uh, a great team working on localized.drupal.org. Um, they're moving it forward in a, a really positive way. Uh, people like Gabor and Sebastian. Uh, who are jumping in and making sure that localized.drupal.org is, is getting ready for an upgrade to Drupal 7, um, that it has all the blockers out of the way from a Drupal 8 standpoint so that we know that we've, we've got the ability to, to localize Drupal 8. Uh, we also have some great support um, in test bots. We've got a, a team that are looking at next generation test bots right now. I just got an update on it yesterday. It's so exciting, the work that they're doing. Um, really getting that test bot infrastructure to a, a repeatable process so that um, Drupal code can be tested whenever it's submitted on Drupal.org. Um, 
they're doing such a great job on that. My team doesn't have to spend a lot of time focusing on it, uh, but we're there so that whenever it gets ready to start being implemented, we can jump in and spin up the servers and do that infrastructure support at that level. So that's been, those are two really good examples where the community initiative is just taking and running with it. Uh, another good example is the two-factor authentication. There's several people from the security uh, working group that are working on this right now. Um, that, that team is looking at two-factor authentication for Drupal.org, trying to make it more secure for uh, particularly administrative users of Drupal.org because uh, the, the level of access that they have, we want to make sure that it's as secure as possible. Um, some areas where we don't necessarily have someone in the community running the initiative just yet uh, is around QA and support system. Um, that came up in our user research, that came up in our software working group prioritization. Um, the issue that we run into there is we don't have a great way forward with it, um, so we would love to get some community involvement, some people who would be willing to kind of lead that uh, initiative and run with it. So a QA and support system, if that's something that you believe really strongly that Drupal.org should be, uh, provide, please contact me. Um, I would love to get you connected with the working groups and uh, get that, that initiative started at this point. And uh, an initiative that will start up at a, at a later time is the reviews and ratings for projects. Uh, as you'll see in one of our initiatives that the staff is focused on, we really want to improve search of the projects. And at some point, we're going to have a rating system. We're going to need a huge community push to rate and um, uh, calculate where a project should rank. Um, and, and that's going to be a, a huge community push coming up. And we're definitely looking to set the right work right now to get some people who volunteer, volunteer for that. So I'm going to go into a little bit of detail about the things that uh, the engineering team that we've built up is going to be focused on over the next few months. Uh, these seven initiatives are the ones that we will spend the majority of our time on um, and really focus on. And more about this can be found on drupal.org slash roadmap. I'm going to mention that URL several more times because it's really where I want people to go uh, to keep track of the initiatives that we're working on and so that they can also get involved in commenting on the issues and helping those issues move forward towards completion as quickly as possible. So let me dive into each of these in a little bit more detail. Uh, first of all, better account creation and login. So it's never a priority to have great login until it breaks. And uh, an example of login and account creation breaking is when you get overwhelmed by spam. Uh, back in July, we had a, a pretty significant spammer attack. The team jumped in. We figured out some solutions. We got rid of the spam uh, that was showing up. I believe the July one was uh, related to association.drupal.org. Um, we were able to get the spam off of there. The content wasn't there anymore. Uh, we thought we had it under control. And then in September, we saw it happen again, and this time it was associated with a DrupalCon site. And the reality is, is in neither case was it a... Um, a case where there was oversight, uh, or, or uh, where we failed to look for something. Uh, it was a case where it was just something that had never really been tackled comprehensively as a part of a, a Drupal.org process. So as we were doing Drupal jobs and we knew we needed to be able to launch it with a really solid workflow that would prevent spam, um, we started looking at this better account creation and login process. And, and this workflow that we're looking at uh, establishing is going to make it a lot easier on newcomers who are coming to the site and learners who are maybe just getting started with Drupal. Um, we don't want spammers to love us. We want spammers to hate how hard it is to create content on Drupal.org. Uh, and we want users, real people that we trust, to love how easy it is to create content on Drupal.org. And that's, uh, that's a, a process that's um, important, but more, more importantly is that, that we start engaging users. And this user engagement workflow that we're going to be putting together is really going to be about getting people who have signed up for an account at some point, getting them information about Drupal on a regular basis, and also making it really easy to move to the next stage where they're contributing content, maybe commenting on issues, maybe contributing their first code, and then rewarding them for that process. Um, we, we think this is really important to, to improving Drupal.org. Uh, it's also a, a key area for us to, to approach from a security standpoint, um, because if it's easy for a spammer to create an account, it's easy for anybody um, that we might not want uh, to have an account uh, to jump in and um, create havoc. So this user engagement process is going to allow us to identify the people that um, are potential contributors and really help engage them and move them up that path.
little bit is uh, organization and user profile improvements. Um, I want to give a little shout out to Danny Norton and actually the uh, the screenshots that you see here where we've got some comps are um, based on Danny's work and then they were tweaked a little bit for um, the DrupalCon Amsterdam presentation. Uh, they were uh, given a little bit of a kind of combined UI by uh, Kevin O'Leary. Um, and the the thing that you'll see in all of these is that we really are moving towards giving better credit to contributors in our community. Um, these are some of the, the things that we heard in user research. We heard that we wanted um, to know what contributor um, what contributor knows about a particular area? Where is their expertise? Uh, we don't want to know how long they've been around. We want to know how connected they are with other members of the community. Uh, we want to show uh, the community our own skills and expertise on our profiles. Um, and we want to show the community too when they can trust an answer uh, that is being provided um, as, as a part of an issue queue or when they can trust the code is, that is being submitted as a part of an issue queue. And one of the ways that you get to that trust is by showing people uh, the history of things that you've done well. And this really ties to the idea uh, of improving these profiles both for users and the organizations that they belong to so that we can give them the, the proper credit about how they're helping to grow Drupal and make it move forward. Um, so this is a slide that kind of shows a sample company, a little shout out to Lullabot here. They're one of our uh, supporting partners and they're also a, a great company to work with. Um, they they have a lot to offer. Um, a lot of our companies that are involved in Drupal have a lot to offer, and we don't do a really good job of highlighting those contributions. So what we'd like to get to is the idea that um, we have some uh, shared iconography that, that shows uh, the things that they're involved in, uh, that gives them point totals. Um, we're kind of building on the idea that um, there's a lot of different ways to contribute, whether that be through providing training or whether that be through providing funds directly to the Drupal Association to help fund Drupal.org uh, hosting and, and staff that are working, uh, whether that be contributing code. All of those are, are valid contributions that we want to, to bubble up in these organization profiles. Um, we also want to bubble those up in the user profiles. And, and in fact, the, the user profiles, this is the key area that makes an open source project successful. It, it, it shows the things that they've done to make the community grow. And uh, whether that's code contribution or in the case of Danny, like an example is she's done a lot of UX and design contribution and we want to be able to highlight that as a, a valuable thing as well. And so uh, we're excited about some of these changes. These may not be the exact way that these uh, pages will lay out in the end, uh, but it's, it's a little bit of an idea of what we want to move towards. Organizations are key to our growth. Um, individuals that power the big organizations that re or in the small organizations that represent the Drupal community, um, they're the ones that are helping us move Drupal co core forward, and they're the ones who are giving us uh, contributed modules that are, are key to building solutions on Drupal. So we really want to highlight that. And um, what we're looking at is ways to tie uh, organizations and their users to each other um, and allowing a user to contribute, a maintainer to give co credit to that contribution, and for the user giving the contribution to be able to give credit to the organizations. So it kind of ties together that web of the three touch points that represent a major contribution. Um, another initiative, initiative for this uh, coming year is going to be responsive redesign of Drupal.org. Now there's two parts to this. Um, one area is the, 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 the work that was done at Zegged at uh, the Dev Days, um, and also more recently the QA and testing that occurred at Badcamp, and that was all around the responsive blue cheese uh, theme that is being used on Drupal.org as the, the main theme. We are really close. Uh, we, we have a code review process that we're going through right now. We're hoping to be able to launch that uh, by the end of the year, and we will have initially responsive version of Drupal.org. We're very excited about this. Uh, the ability to, to get to this great content on mobile devices, on tablets, um, that's step one. And then step two is a more comprehensive redesign that is being led by the Drupal.org content working group. Uh, it started with the user research where we got our user personas. 
Uh, we're in the process right now of finalizing a content strategy uh, selection. We're selecting a vendor to help us with that process. And they're going to be helping us with the content strategy, really figuring out what content types we're missing on Drupal.org, and also an improvement of the information architecture, because I'm sure all of you out there have at one time or another had that moment where you're like, I know I've seen it on Drupal, but I don't know how to find it. I'm just going to go search in Google. Um, <laughs> There's just not a good uh, path to get to certain content on Drupal.org, and we want to improve that with a, an overall information architecture uh, overhaul. Uh, and what we're going to be working on with the content working group is establishing a design library and a design system that is uh, a pattern that can be used across all the Drupal.org sites. Um, and that set of patterns will, will really make it easier to use Drupal.org. And we see that as, as a key area that we need to, uh, to improve in the coming months. Uh, responsive also, because we live in a, a community that, um, frankly, we need, to, we need to go bigger as well as go smaller, because a lot of our developers are sitting there with two, maybe three monitors. Uh, they're doing their work. When they're in the issue queues, we need to give them full advantage of the real estate. Uh, but maybe when on, they're on a mobile device and they're looking for just enough information there, we give them a, a little bit different experience. So we need to be responsive across the spectrum, the really big screens all the way down to the really small screens. Um, and we see that as, as kind of a huge next step in where we take the responsive redesign. Another one that is out there that um, has actually seen a lot of traction since uh, DrupalCon Amsterdam is the work that we want to do towards the get and issue workflow. Uh, it's a concept called issue workspaces. Uh, Ryan Aslett from our team did a great presentation uh, uh, remotely to DrupalCon Amsterdam with some, some key contributors in this area, and uh, there was a lot of excited response to it. So I'm going to go into it in a little bit more detail so uh, folks can get a sense of what it is and see if they want to jump into the conversation and, and help contribute. Um, a lot of people have compared uh, our, our Git situation right now to this epic battle with GitHub. And I don't really see it that way, but um, just, for, uh, just for fun, we had uh, uh, Lee, who's on our, our marketing team. She's uh, our content writer. Uh, she, she has OctoKitty and Drupalcon fighting with lightsabers uh, on a cloud. And I, you know, I think that sums up our Git and issue workflow needs is that uh, we need to, to, to battle this out with lightsabers. Um, not really. The, the conversation, though, has always fallen back to these, this idea of we need pull requests, or we need to fix Git, or we, we just need to migrate. And it's not, none of that is particularly simple. Um, many of the contributors on, on Drupal.org don't feel that pull requests as implemented on GitHub would work for the current workflow that we have in the issue queues. Um, they recognize that a better workflow would, would help build for efficiency and new contributors. And they all recognize that it works, kind of, but it could be a whole lot better. Um, our options are status quo, it's not really an option, uh, moving to GitHub, switching to a new internal software tool, or we could modernize the Drupal.org workflow. And we've heard this over and over again, and there's, uh, if you go to Drupal.org slash roadmap, uh, we've actually linked to some of these conversations that have happened before. They're great conversations. Um, they, they all kind of get to this stuck point of, yeah, but, um, and I think we found a way that allows us to get past that. Um, we have to integrate with GitHub at some point, but just migrating to GitHub would be a huge project. Uh, user accounts right now would not be compatible. They, they wouldn't directly tie between the two. The workflow change would also slow down Drupal 8 development, which is something that none of us want to see happen. Um, so we need to look at figuring out ways to do the integrations uh, directly with Drupal.org. And, and one of the big bits that we have on Drupal.org that a lot of other open source projects don't have that's kind of our secret sauce is we have the canonical repositories for all of our modules and themes on Drupal.org. And we provide updates.drupal.org, which allows every Drupal site to kind of call home and see if there's a new version available. And that particular feature is kind of our secret sauce that makes Drupal really successful. Um, there's many other, many other uh, ingredients to that secret sauce, but that's one of the, the key ingredients that I think uh, makes Drupal.org particularly successful. We can do an improvement. Uh, we, can, we can fundamentally change the way our issue queues work now that we have a dedicated team to spend some time implementing this. Um, the approach that we are suggesting that uh, we've done a lot of work and research around is a concept called issue workspaces. 
Um, it uses a new feature that's going to require us to upgrade our version of Git to a little bit newer version that um, that has a new feature called Git namespaces. Git namespaces are, are very similar to the idea of per issue repositories, um, and it's going to allow us to do issue queues that um, that have a kind of full Git integration. So right now our patch process um, relies on someone going through a Git process outside of our issue queues to create a patch file. They then upload that patch file to the issue queues, and then a maintainer can download that patch file and apply it to their Git branch and work from there. Uh, we'd really like to simplify that whole process so that maintainers and contributors are working from Git to Git, uh, rather than working from Git to patch to Git. Um, and to do that, we're going to have to make some changes to the issue queues that allow that integration to happen. But once we do, it's going to open up a lot of possibilities, such as inline editing and other uh, great features that I think is going to increase the total number of potential contributors to Drupal.org. So we're very excited about this. Uh, we're, we're doing the, the kind of preliminary study on what tweaks and upgrades we need to do to get the, the blockers out of the way so that we can begin full force work on this area. Um, a couple big bonuses to this approach is it's not going to break the current patch process. We can basically cre create a commit on the backside whenever somebody uploads a patch. Um, and that that means that you know people who have a workflow that they're very familiar with and that's how they've contributed for years, we don't have to change that. Um, but what it does do is it allows us to give better tools for particularly people who don't want to use that old process or who are used to the simpler processes of, like, say, the GitHub process or running their own private Git repositories. Um, it's also more easily integrated with our user and organization credits that we want to implement. So when we were talking about the profiles and be able to say that a contributor gave something, um, we'll have that integrated into the issue queues so that we're storing that real time and we're able to give that credit pretty much real time. As soon as the maintainer says, yes, this was helpful, we can pass that back to that person's uh, user profile and we can pass that on to an organization profile and let it change those uh, metrics that we're using to display um, how much and how frequently someone is involved in the community. Um, a little example of what this might look like is you basically trigger the creation of an issue workspace. Someone might see some text cleanup they want to do, they can do it with an inline edit. That person then pulls it back into what they were working on. They kind of work through um, going back and forth. You guys didn't need to see my calendar, apologies. Um, going back and forth with other people who are going to help out with this particular project. Um, Maybe code gets uh, committed in that doesn't get accepted. Uh, maybe some additional inline edits are made. But when it gets down to the end, we want to make it so that basically that, that maintainer can push a button and it brings in that, uh, that contribution with the whole chain of credits to the people that were involved and then commits it into the branch that was involved. Um, this, this is a real life example of a progression. Um, instead, of, um, instead of it being git pulls and uh, rebasing head and that sort of thing. This was all done with patch files. Um, but this example shows uh, a workflow that, that could work that would move us towards something that could be done directly in the git space, which we think will kind of accelerate the process at which developers can work. Um, it'll make it a lot more efficient. Um, it also makes it a lot cleaner and easier on maintainers to, to pull things in. Uh, whenever they see that it's ready to go. Uh, it's worth noting that every time one of these things has a commit to, the, to that, that issue workspace, we're also running that commit uh, against test bots, uh, getting back results on that as appropriate, um, so that we can see, oh yeah, this doesn't break or cause regressions uh, to the code that's being contributed. So it's a, it's a really exciting way to approach um, what has been a, the great Git problem up till now. Um, one of our other initiatives is going to be making Drupal.org search more usable. And related to that, and it's, it's one of the other initiatives on the list, is improving the tools to find and select projects. So we've heard in user research that people really want to find the information quick. They want to see what modules may be available to build a particular feature. Um, they want to figure out if the module is worth using. Is it maintained? Is it, um, um, is it going through, uh, is, has it been abandoned, is, is one of the things that people would love to be able to see as it relates to modules. Uh, we need to be able to uh, show that information more readily on Drupal.org. Um, and this is not 
it's not rocket surgery. We can do this. Uh, we can do a better sol solar settings uh, or maybe look at uh, some alternative uh, search engine uh, systems like Elasticsearch. Um, we can do search to plays that, that show just what you need and um, really kind of um, hone in on just the right information at just the right time so that Drupal.org search is usable as opposed to always having to go to Google. Uh, we can add facets that are a little bit more contextual, um, that are more performant than the filters that we have on the, the module search pages right now. Um, we can also make organizations and users searchable, and I think this is something that people have been dying to have for a long time, because maybe you know somebody's uh, Drupal.org username, um, but you cannot track them down on Drupal.org because uh, there's no great way to search for a user unless you know the hidden search page. Um, and that's something I think we can really make better. It ties into all the other initiatives that we're working on uh, in terms of making it easier to contribute, making it easier to see who's contributed, um, and making it easier to select the right stuff to build the project that you need. Um, around selecting projects, you know, one of the things we've heard over and over again is that notion of ratings. And while we have not gotten to the point that uh, we can say definitively, uh, we haven't had enough community input to say definitively where it's whether it's five star or whether it's just you know flag favorite modules, um, there are ways for us to, to go through and rate our database and, and really help bubble up information about which modules are the right module for your purpose. Uh, right now we, we do sort modules whenever you, you get the search results on the, uh, uh, the module search page or on the theme search page, we, we sort them by are they the most used? So if they've if they've been calling back to updates.drupal.org, uh, we rank them accordingly. Um, but there's so much more information that might be valuable, and that's not particularly useful for like maybe edge cases where um, it's not as frequently used case for for a Drupal site. Um, but it's certainly something that Drupal does really well, and we don't bubble up the information that needs to be there. A good example is there are way more sites that use Drupal as a publishing system than sites that use Drupal as a commerce system, but Drupal is an excellent commerce system. So being able to bubble up the modules that are actually being really well maintained um, if somebody does a search that's tied to a commerce-related term and being able to show that so that people can select the right module. That's, that's a key thing that we can do with Drupal.org. Um, there's been initiatives about this before. There was the Prairie Initiative. We've got uh, improved project pages out of that, and the project listings are a, a little bit better as well. Uh, there was the Projects Quality Initiative, and there's some things that um, we have the data now from these previous initiatives that are being pulled into some of the project pages. We just aren't necessarily using it as a part of our search results. Um, and there was also an initiative about highlighting projects that follow best practices, and I, I think these all... I mean, they go back years. We have uh, examples of issues and conversations that have gone back to, to Drupal.org version 4, uh, where people have been asking for those sorts of things, but we haven't had the, the people to, to jump in and knock out these fairly significant engineering tasks. Um, and now we have a staff to jump in and do this, and so we're really excited to, to tackle this in the coming months. Uh, another area where we're, we're going to have initiative is a upgrade of groups.drupal.org. It's still on Drupal 6. Um, and this is one of the tools that is used by the community to uh, find events, uh, to join local user groups. Um, it's, it's a way a lot of people communicate around initiatives and ideas without really creating an issue to start that process. It gets a lot less traffic than drupal.org in terms of total traffic. Um, but if we upgrade it and we improve it, we can actually make it kind of a hub for some of the ongoing work in the community. And that's something that, that we see as being critical. Um, we still need to decide a path for the migration. Uh, we're working right now to, to set up some times for meetings with maintainers and community to figure out what path for migration is gonna be best. Um, and we also, while we're doing that migration, we're gonna take the opportunity to make it much more integrated with Drupal.org. So if, you're a, um, if, if you've gone to a DrupalCon and we know that because it's on your Drupal.org profile, we can pass that information on to your groups.drupal.org profile and maybe deliver information to you that is contextual because of that. Um, if we know that you are a, um, a member of the Drupal Association, we can pass that on to your Drupal.org profile. Um, if we know you've contributed to the following modules, we could pass that on to your groups.drupal.org profile or link back to your drupal.org profile as appropriate so that people can see, oh, this person 
they have a lot of clout and a lot of uh, respect because they've done all of these um, these great contributions. So maybe that lends credence to the the words that they're saying over in the the groups.drupal.org space. So being able to tie together that information about contribution, about credit, um, about commitment to the community, um, and tying all that in between groups.drupal.org and drupal.org. So obviously this is a, a huge list of things. Um, I've, I've gone over a lot, but if you want to go into a little bit more detail on all of these, uh, you can go to drupal.org slash roadmap. Uh, this will link you to each of the initiatives. Uh, we have an issue tag that we're applying to issues that are tied to an initiative. Um, you can go in there, begin looking at the initiatives, track on the issues that uh, follow the issues that are of interest to you. Please join in and, and help contribute to this because uh, we need the feedback. Uh, we need to know that we're going down the right path with uh, some of these decisions. Um, and we want to move as quickly as we can. And the best way we can do that is by having people contribute in the issues right now. So um, I want to make a quick call out. I, I know that uh, Lauren is, is going to talk about how there's a couple surveys coming to you. Um, the 2014 Drupal Community Survey, which I believe is going to be available through the end of the year, um, if you get an opportunity, you're, you're going to get the email if you attended this webcast. Uh, please fill that out. That's really important information uh, for us. It helps us rate how well we're doing with developers. Um, it helps us uh, make sure that we're building the right tools for you. Uh, it gives us a lot of great feedback about the state of the Drupal community. So please take a moment and fill out that survey. It's huge for us. And um, I also want to do one more shout out for the things that are coming up. Uh, we've got DrupalCon Latin America. That's uh, just around the bend in February. Uh, we've got the global training days that are this weekend, so if you get an opportunity and you know somebody who needs to participate in the global training days, uh, please have them do so. Um, and we're going to try to um, um, increase the number of webcasts related to Drupal.org in the coming months, so uh, be on the lookout for Drupal.org webcasts, but we're also doing a lot of great community webcasts um, and a lot of uh, webcasts that are, are focused on ways that uh, uh, companies and organizations uh, that are using Drupal are doing it in really exciting and new ways. So uh, please take a look at the webcast and uh, see what's coming up next. Great. Thanks, Josh. Um, I have one quick question before we finish up. Okay. Will you be publishing lessons learned from enhancing Drupal.org that Drupal administrators can use? For example, enhanced account creation and login. Uh, definitely. I, everything that we do in that space, we tend to um, we tend to have issues created on Drupal.org that are kind of our community uh, conversation, going back and forth on what we're doing and how we're doing it. Uh, so there will definitely be information there. And then we're also working right now on uh, our own documentation as it relates to um, what what we have on Drupal.org, and we've got a subsite that we're setting up that's going to have our change notifications and upcoming changes and also documentation of how things are configured, and we're going to be doing that on infrastructure.drupal.org um, in, the, in the coming year. So we're going to have a subsite that's basically dedicated to explaining how we've done what we've done. Uh, some of that information is already on Drupal.org, so it's, it's definitely something that you can dig into, but uh, um, as we are doing these new changes, we're definitely going to be doing it you know, out in the open in the public so that others can learn from it. Great. Thanks so much. I, I think that is all of our uh, questions that we have today. Uh, I just wanted to thank Josh uh, so much for taking us through a really great uh, experience and, and showing us what's going to come down the pike for Drupal.org and all of the wonderful things that our, our tech team are doing in the office. So um, much appreciated. Obviously, we can't do it without them and our volunteers. So thank you. Just as a last minute reminder, um, we encourage you to look into our organization and individual memberships. These also help fund our scholarships, grants, and servers. And you can find out more information at association.drupal.org slash membership. And often there are promotions within that uh, to sometimes get a free training or um, extra perks. So keep an eye out for that as well. Just as a reminder, additionally, there'll be a survey at the end of this webcast, just four or five questions about the actual webcast so we can improve the experience for everyone. And also, this will be recorded and sent out to you via email in a couple of days. So 
if you missed something or you know that someone wants to uh, also listen in, we'll have that recorded for you as well. So thank you everyone for joining us and uh, we hope we will hear from you on another webcast. Thanks, Josh. Thanks, Lauren.